Summer Craft here. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about bowl blanks and what I'm looking out for when I'm choosing a piece of wood. Um, what I have here is a prime example. It's a piece of cherry. It's got some spalting in it, but it also has a pretty substantial crack because the pith is still in the wood there. You can see the pith is there and it has cracked right across the entire blank, but it is actually very shallow and I could probably just turn that away. Um, it doesn't go all the way through the blank. Um, but this could be very punky, it could be very soft. It, it, it's one of those blanks to be wary of. Uh, whereas this one in particular is poplar and it's solid. There is no cracks to be seen in it at all. I just cut this on the bandsaw and I think I'm going to be turning this one today actually. Um, I have one on the lathe which has been put on the lathe at least four times and I keep putting it on, taking it off, putting it on, taking it off. I just can't decide whether I want to turn it or not. And I'll bring you in and I'll show you why. Okay, so here it is, a nice piece of ash, which has really been rough cut with a bandsaw and a chainsaw quite some time ago, in fact. But as you can see, there's a crack that starts here, works its way all across, across the entire blank, and it ends right about here across on the other side so this is a very concerning piece of wood for me to turn because there's a really good chance that this piece this whole piece could just fly off at any moment so it's a shame because it's a beautiful piece of ash although it does have this nasty crack in the base of it as well where there was a branch um, it's just one of those ones that I want to turn but at the same time it does concern me a lot um, I've considered taking some glue to it, such as this, uh, Starbond medium thick. This one is the black. There's also the brown and the clear that you could use to fill that crack. But you want to make sure that you filled it properly. You might even want to use an epoxy, uh, two-part epoxy. But again, that's why this piece has never been turned, because it has been concerning to me. So I'm going to take this off the lathe and I'll probably end up turning the previous one that I just showed you. So I honestly don't think that that piece of wood is ever going to get turned as a bowl. The risk factor is just way too high. Um, another option would be something that's glued up, whether it's segmented or even plywood. You can get Baltic birch plywood and this is one that one of the guys in our guild gave to me that he started turning. But he was having an issue with it because it was dulling his tool too quickly. So carbide might be the answer or just keep on sharpening. Uh, so that's another option there. This is one that he glued up and didn't even put on the lathe yet. He just gave it to me. So I'm going to end up turning this and probably returning it to him. Um, and I think I'm going to add some intrinsic colours. I recently got the intrinsic colours from Hampshire Sheen. So there's a good chance I'm going to be using those on that particular bowl. I've been asked to make a salad bowl that they want about a 12 inch by 4 inch. Well, I don't have a 12 inch by 4 inch piece of wood. This is as close as I've got and I think it's about 9, nine by 3.5. So uh, I'm going to turn this and see if that's, uh, if that's acceptable for them. It's a nice piece of wood and I think I might add some colour to the outside and then leave the inside food safe. So here I have it mounted to the lathe. It's running pretty true. Um, I've got the tail stock up for safety and support um, and I'm going to start at my slowest speed which on this lathe is 630 uh, just to get it trued up and get the shape that I'm looking for. Um, I'm essentially looking for, a, it's going to be a salad bowl so it's just a basic uh, design, there's going to be nothing particularly special about it but it will be a functional design which is what you want for a piece like this.
actually so I've sanded this down to 600, 600 grit and I'm just going to clean it with alcohol and then I will sand it again at 600 grit because the alcohol will raise the grain but I just want to get the the feel for how my sanding job is because I'm going to apply color to the outside and I don't really want any sort of marks or tear out because I think that that is going to show in the color um, and to be honest I'm not used to using sandpaper because I use Yorkshire grit all the time now so that's my excuse anyway and I'm sticking to it so that's cleaned with alcohol now like I say it raises the grain just a little bit now the outside doesn't really have to be food safe, but the inside does. I'm not sure if that's a little bit of tear out there, it could be, which is annoying. Even there a little bit. I'm not sure. If it is, it's not terrible and it's going to stay. So I'm going to sand this again at 600 grit. So I'm not using Yorkshire grit on this because it's an oil based product uh, and I want to put some water based stain on this, the Hampshire Sheen water based stain. And I think I'm going to go with the green. Okay, so this is <coughs> the sample pack. Well, it's the 150 ml pack. And it's got all of the colors in there you have to shake them before you use them just to make sure it's well and truly mixed i just got to pick which color i want there's forest green there which i'm thinking i might use is there a different green stone blue black i don't want to use straw honey burnt orange flame Midnight blue, plum, and earth. Earth might be a good color, but I think I'm going to go with forest green. Okay, so here I am doing something that I don't do often, and that's coloring. Um, in fact, I've hardly done any. So this is relatively new to me. So it shows here that, uh, that I have to apply a base coat. So after a sanding to 400 grit, I actually went to 600 grit. Um, I'm going to completely cover the back side of it now with forest green um, and then I'm going to allow that to completely dry. Once it's dried I have to sand it back starting at 320 going up to 400 grit and then I'm going to apply my overcoat which I think I'm going to use the honey. I quite like the look of, look, the look of that so we'll see if that works well together. Um, so here goes nothing. Um, I'm going to give this a good shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your cheek, shake your booty, shake your booty. Okay. All right, so I think that that is good enough, a good enough shake. We'll see. So I'll get a piece of paper towel and coat the whole thing with forest green. Now it does say if there's any, any marks on the wood, it's gonna show up badly. So uh, I think there are in fact a few marks on here. So we're probably gonna see them pretty good now. We will see. All right, cap is off. Here we go, guys. <laughs> All right. No turning back now, is there? Okay, so as per the instructions, I've put a base coat on and uh, I've sanded it down. I went back to 220, 320 and then 400. And now I'm going to apply an overcoat color. I'm going to go with a different one. So I decided to go with the honey. So I've got the forest green as an undercoat. And now I'm going to go with the honey just to see how that turns out should give it some nice highlights I guess don't know I'm new to this 
Okay, so I've given it a shake. I've cleaned this just with a towel. I haven't put any alcohol on it or anything because uh, I don't want the card to rub off because I think it might just rub off if I did that. Um, same as with sanding sealers, you want to use a spray sanding sealer. Um, so I'll be doing that once I'm done and then I'll be waxing it. So, okay, so here goes nothing. This is now the honey. See how this looks. It will give it some nice contrast with the green and the honey. Oh, I've spilt it. Made a bloody mess, didn't I? Ooh. That's dry. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some oil on there, see if that kind of just blends it a little bit more. I'm going to be using a little bit of the walnut oil on the outside. So I've got this uh, sanding sealer, which is a spray can version. I've, I'm going to put a coat of that on now, and then I'm going to denib it and uh, finish it the usual way. Okay, so I wasn't 100% satisfied with the finish that I had because I did have a little bit of uh, tear out, and adding color really shows that up. So what I ended up doing was sanding it back down again, reapplying the color, and then reapplying the oil. I used Danish oil this time, because I ran out of the uh, the walnut oil. But for the exterior, I'm not too worried about being food safe on the outside, because the food's going to be on the inside. So the outside, I'm going to denib it now, because it's been sealed with a spray sanding sealer. Um, I'm going to denib it now with the scouring pad that is supplied with the uh, intrinsic colours from Hampshire Sheen and then I'm going to go ahead and apply uh, Hampshire Sheen High Gloss. Okay so this has been sitting here for a few minutes uh, and I've let the wax go tacky. The solvents have vapped off now and now all that's left is the wax and the oil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same paper towel and just buff that to a shine. Alright so the outside of the bowl is done and now I need to hollow this baby and uh, put a food safe finish on the inside. I'm going to turn this down to about maybe three-eighths of an inch. I don't want it too thin because it is a utilitarian bowl. So let's get this one finished.
Okay, so I've got the inside of this bowl turned and sanded to 600 grit. What I want to do now is burn the rim to transition from the colored exterior to the food safe plain interior. Okay, so clean off the bed, make sure there's nothing flammable that can catch fire when you're doing this. I'm gonna try and just gently burn the rim of this bowl just to give it a little bit of an accent. I could, it could be a big mistake, but I'm going for it. Okay. Right, normally I would clean this with alcohol, but I don't want to put anything on the inside that is not necessary. So I'm just going to give this a wipe with this, and then I'm going to start applying some uh, butcher block oil. Okay, so I've got this Watco uh, butcher block oil. It's oil and conditioner. So I'm going to apply this to the inside of this bowl. With a clean paper towel. I'm going to put as much in as I can, let it soak right into the wood. Thank you guys for watching. There it is, one nine and a quarter inch by four inch salad bowl with uh, Hampshire Sheen intrinsic dyes and I think the colors are absolutely gorgeous I really do like them and I'm looking forward to using the other colors that are in that kit it's got the burnt rim and the food safe inside which is basically mineral oil and beeswax um, really happy with this project and I hope the new owner likes it too um, my next project, I've just purchased some wood that is larger than what I normally get. Uh, these ones are about 13 inch by 4 inch. Um, so I'm really looking forward to trying that and I've got a new design that I'm going to try out. Um, I'm sure it's been done before but it's not, not done by me so I'm going to try that. I want to incorporate some new different features into what I'm making. So uh, I'm planning on using some resins and some pyro and some color and things that I don't normally incorporate into my into my woodwork because usually I just like the, the natural features of the wood. But sometimes you get wood that just requires some extra pizzazz. So that's what we're going to go with with some of the upcoming projects. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you again for the next wood turning project. Thank you.